This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We have got another elevated event in the PGA Tour this week. It is the Arnold Palmer Invitational, and all the big stars are here. We're going to break that down from a betting perspective and let you know where Brandon Gadula is seeing value for this weekend and also talk about tonight's NBA action with a 10-game slate on a Tuesday. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com. Joined here, as mentioned, by Brandon Gadula. You can find him on Twitter at Gadula13. He is the managing editor of NumberFire.com senior Managing editor, sorry, it's only been like 16 years since you had that title. Anyway, I'll get it eventually. Brandon, I am rusty on your title because you are back from vacation. You were not here last week. Allie McCann filled in admirably for you. But how was your vacation? How are you doing today? Uh, it was good. Went out to, uh, well, flew to Las Vegas, then to drive around Southern California, do some national parks. But uh, coming from central pennsylvania area figured it would just be a very very different climate in february than what we have in central central pa Mm -hmm. it was for the first like five or six days of the trip and then uh like san diego got its first ever blizzard warning and (laughs) that was like 24 hours after we had left from san diego so we did change some of our plans um toward the end of that trip but yeah it was a it's a great time yeah, you brought the snow to mm-hmm. California. Like uh, NASCAR was in Fontana this past weekend, which is right outside of LA, and they couldn't do any on track activity Saturday because it was snowing like these massive flakes. Like the mountains there were supposed to get like 10 feet at one point. That was like the thought. They didn't get that. But like the one time you go to California, it decides to snow. Well, second time, but yes. That's true. Uh, I went to Daytona for the 500 when I was in high school and it, I was like same thing, same as you like, okay, I'm leaving Minnesota, going to Florida during the winter. I can like pack just shorts and be happy. And then it was like 50 degrees the whole time. And I froze to death. I also did that in Phoenix, but that was more so because I'm an idiot, not because of like bad weather. I didn't realize it gets cold in the desert because I ignore popular culture that tells you it gets cold in the desert. So maybe we're bad luck. Maybe that's a takeaway here. Could be. But yes. Uh, yeah. So my wife wants to see all like all the national parks. So we do a lot of like camping. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I can attest from camping in Death Valley. It gets pretty cold overnight. I've also heard it gets warm there. So you happen to be there when it was not uh, quite warm. Not give and take, I guess. Yeah, not 122 at that time, but uh, glad you're back safely. Glad you had a good time and glad you did not freeze out there in the the tundra of california we're gonna dive into tonight's nba slate first and then talk about the arnold palmer invitational let you know where brandon is seeing value in both those in just one second but first a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to covering the spread wherever you get your podcast we of course are on apple podcast spotify stitcher google Podcasts, you name it you can find us there tomorrow ed feng is back he was on vacation for a bit as well we'll be talking about some men's college basketball getting his read on the state of the nation right now so that'll be tomorrow over on the covering the spread podcast feed and on the FanDuel youtube page make sure you're subscribed wherever you want to check that out FanDuel is america's number one sports book and the number one place to get your friends in the game that's why FanDuel's is giving you and a friend the opportunity to each earn 75 dollars All you need is to invite your friends using your exclusive referral link under the refer icon in the app. As soon as your friend makes any bet of at least $10 on Sportsbook, you'll both get $50 in Sportsbook bonus bets. And as soon as they bet at least $10 on FanDuel Casino, you'll both get $25 in casino credit. Just head over to the FanDuel Sportsbook and Casino apps to invite your friends today and get your $75 referral bonus. Must be 21 plus and present in Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, or West Virginia. Referred players must wager $10 plus within 30 days after signing up. Limit five referrals during a 30-day period. Sportsbook bonus bets and casino site credit are non-withdrawable and expire 
30 or 14 days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.com or sportsbook.fanduel.com. This is a new read. I've not done it 16,000 times like the other ones. So I actually have to read it. And with my uh, inability to focus on most things. Uh, no, not you. It's tough. I know. I know. Uh, gambling problem? This is the important part. Call 1-800-270-7117 in Michigan, in New Jersey, and Pennsylvania, 1-800-GAMBLER, or in West Virginia, go to 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Now, Brandon, let's start things off on the NBA side of things, and there we got a couple of nationally televised games for tonight. Those games are the Lakers at the Grizzlies and the Timberwolves at the Clippers. When you look at those two games specifically, anything stand out to you there? Yeah, so we'll start with the the uh, Lakers and Grizzlies game. Uh, Lakers two and zero since the break with some some nice wins, but uh, D'Angelo Russell barely played. Uh, and not trying to bury the lead, but LeBron James expected to be out for an extended period. And if you take, I mean, you know, I, I know I wasn't on the show last week. I guess that was the only week that I missed. I'm Correct. Not, um, I believe. Yeah. Now you went hard at the Super Bowl, so it's been. Oh and, yeah, that's true. Well, so uh, anyway, that recent. I have no idea when Super Bowl was. To be fully honest with you, the twelfth. Okay. All right. We'll we'll get our interns to work on this and yeah, see how exactly. long it's actually been. Yeah, yeah. But um, just as a reminder, <clears throat> uh, for me, relevant samples and you know key players and having them on and off the floor and in and out of games is the only thing I care about when it comes to NBA. I don't really, you know, I'll look at like trends and, and over under trends and that kind of stuff, but. It's it's specifically for me uh, leveraged almost exclusively through who's on the court. And no surprise, you take LeBron off the court. Um, they're not a great team. Uh, the Grizzlies are still without Steven Adams, but that's not overly impactful as much as I love Steven Adams. Not quite the same impact there. Uh, my model does like the Grizzlies to cover pretty easily. That spread, I think I first saw it at eight, then it was at eight and a half. Now it's at nine, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. Um, this is one where my model just thinks it's a complete blowout, so I'm still okay with that. But yeah. for me, I prefer uh, the the over-under, uh, like the under at 230 and a half. The, the Lakers have a lot of offensive concerns. I don't like – I don't really love overs with blowout potential. Um, I think this could be that that – particular type of game so for me still don't mind the grizzlies and, and wouldn't fault anyone also think that grizzlies could be part of like a money money line parlay something like that but for me preferred route is under 230 and a half for this game yeah so the spread the spread is nine as you alluded to the money line for the grizzlies is minus 390 so implied odds there right around 80 percent if you want to bet the grizzlies to just win this game outright uh the total 230 and a half as you said minus 110 on the under on that one. And I think that with no LeBron, it makes a lot of sense that things be that way. The problem is like, you know, there was a lot of changeover with this Lakers team post trade deadline. We haven't seen a ton of action without LeBron since then, but still, I think that logic, you, you want LeBron, you want LeBron. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know, I don't want to go on a huge limb here as a non NBA guy, but LeBron's probably good. Just throwing that out there. Okay. Other game tonight involves uh, the Timberwolves facing off uh, with the Clippers. What are you seeing there with a six and a half point spread currently? Yeah. So I had it initially at six. Um, that's trending uh, in, in the favor that, that I have it. I have the Clippers favored by eight. Uh, Rudy Gobert is sick. Missed the last game, but he's listed as probable. Clippers are mostly healthy, uh, but are without even to Zubots. Um, but, you know, factoring all that in again, I have the Clippers favored by around eight. So I like it a little bit less mm -hmm. now that it's six and a half, but still uh, some some juice there for me. And it, but once again, the theme of the night for me is going to be don't mind some spreads, but actually prefer totals. Um, preferring the over even at 234, uh, the Clippers kind of getting a little bit less slow. I'll say I'm not going to call them fast. Um, but they've been allowing their opponents to go over their implied team totals pretty often over the past 20 games, just kind of for some context, 65% of the time opponents have gone over their implied team total. And that's the same number for the Clippers. Again, those are things that I, I kind of look at in conjunction with the actual data, the on off stuff that I use, but it's nice to see that, um, for me. So I think that it's another spot where it's the total I like, but this time it's the over even at 234. Yeah, 234 minus 110 on the over for that one. Spread is Clippers minus six and a half. 
Is that one now that it's six and a half instead of six? Is that more so a lean for you, or do you still feel good enough where you would take the six and a half as well? Um, I'd I'd take it, but okay. uh, for me, that's going to be a smaller uh, smaller unit bet than than it would have been otherwise. Okay, so liking the over for the Wolves and the Clippers, and the under for uh, the Lakers and the Grizzlies for tonight. As mentioned, pretty large slate in the NBA for tonight. It is a full, robust 10 games, so eight games we have not discussed yet. Brandon, elsewhere on the slate, where are you seeing bets you like at FanDuel Sportsbook? Um, Kind of one stands out more than the others, and then everything else is pretty tight, and I want to be want to be all right with that. But once again, it's a game where this spread has changed in the past like 20 minutes since I listed this stuff. Uh, but that's the Spurs and the Jazz. Jazz now minus 10. They were minus nine, but it's again a situation where I, I don't mind the spread, but I prefer the total. Um, these two teams just played on the 25th. Uh, it was a 118-102 win by the Jazz for a total uh, of 220, if my math is um, correct on. on that one. Uh, Bingo. <laughs> Spurs are just reeling. They were a pretty over-friendly team early on. That's scaling back, which, you know, you, you can kind of take that as you will. Sometimes things just naturally correct. Sometimes... Uh, you know, it, it can be a, it, it can be a either or situation as as far as how I view it. But with the relevant health for these teams right now, I just don't see an, I don't see enough offensive firepower for the Spurs to keep this one particularly close. The spread indicates that as well. Um, I don't think the Jazz will need to run it up. The data again backs that up, and I, I mentioned a you know money line parlay. I think you go Jazz and um grizzlies and get a nice uh reduced odds there i think both of these teams get a pretty easy win tonight uh the jazz by themselves and a single leg are minus 480 as of right now going over to the grizzlies as well they are minus 390 if you decide to uh plug both those together the combined odds minus 193 over at FanDuel sportsbook uh the implied odds in that 65.9 percent so if you want to peg both those two together you can get it at minus 193 Right now at FanDuel Sports, but again, it sounds like the bigger read for you more so is on the totals than on the money lines, correct? Yeah, and I think that's probably going to be pretty common for me as, as the season yeah. ends where team motivation is up in the air. Uh, team health could be, you know, we'll, we'll get a lot of uh, last second ins and outs as teams kind of do some weird stuff. So I think totals are going to be something that I prioritize even a little bit more. Uh, down the stretch but yeah throughout the rest of the slate i kind of don't see enough that i could recommend whether it's due to key injuries by by way of questionable tags i mean i yeah. can count for guys who are out questionable tags are always worrisome um and then small samples for teams who have really uh kind of blown things up so those are the three those yeah. three totals are my favorites of the night and again, those three were the Grizzlies, Lakers under 230 and a half. We got the Clippers, Wolves over 234 and the Jazz and the Spurs under 236 and a half as Brandon's favorite bets for tonight in the NBA. Let's talk some golf, though. We got the Arnold Palmer Invitational coming up once again this week. It is a massive, really, really good field. And it's at Bay Hill. Bay Hill is a spot we know pretty well, Brandon. Uh, you showed me a clip of the weather forecast this week. It ain't great. Similar to last year, I think it was Sunday, where things got super, super jacked up with the wind. So what should we know about Bay Hill before we talk about the feel for this week's Arnold Palmer Invitational? Yes, yeah, so it's, it's a tough course, tough designated field um, as well. So we're going to have a lot of great golfers at a tough course. Love that. It's my favorite type of golf to watch. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's a bit longer than most par 72s. A lot of that does stem from distance of the par threes. That'll somewhat increase variance more because the par threes will be even more volatile. It's not just going to be necessarily a wedge. I think they average around 210 uh, for the par threes. But, uh, you know, distance kind of correlates, carries throughout the bag. The, the club club gapping is, you know, it's not like it's guys hit driver super far but hit everything else short it's it's pretty typical throughout the bag so that's gonna allow you um a higher loft into those longer par threes if you're longer off the tee almost always so i think there's gonna be an emphasis on driving distance um strokes gained off the tee strokes gained approach not the narrowest fairways necessarily but they're really penal if you miss them there's bunkers there's water guys are gonna make bogeys you're just gonna want to make sure you guys aren't making double bogeys very often 
So again, ball striking is going to be key. The best players in the world. Take a look at them. They're generally the best overall ball strikers. It's a major-esque field, major-esque course. So I'm not messing around with many, if any, long shots for yeah. outrights. Um, you know, I'll, I'll go for those guys for top 10s, top 20s. But seems destined to be a bit of a superstar winner. The past winners in the field since 2016 – Scotty Scheffler uh, last year, Tiro Hatton, Francesco Molinari, whenever he was, uh, you know, gearing up for his um, his peak, Roy McIlroy, Jason Day in 2016. And then the other two winners in that span, Bryson DeChambeau and Mark Leishman. Now two live guys, but, you know, it's it's probably going to be a name that a lot of people recognize who ends up winning this week. So you mentioned there is a decent amount of distance, but also it can be penal in this a fair way. And it sounds to me as if, we want, we kind of like need to prioritize guys who can gain off the tee. Yep. Like, is that kind of what you were trying to say there? Yeah. So like Molinari, uh, yeah. Tiro Hatton, not like super big hitters. Uh, Leishman, not like the biggest hitter, anything like that. You can overpower this place at some times, but yeah, you want to be able to make sure that your guys are gaining strokes off the tee uh, for this week, you know, and then from there, it's going to be a lot of long approaches still. Yeah. So approach play matters. Greens are a bit larger. Uh, than your average PGA Tour green. It's about 125% of the average green, so a bit bigger there. But, you know, with the with the wind expected to be up, it's going to be hard to stick. So it's a really an all-around test. But yeah. the things you can bank on, you can bank on strokes gained off the team or you can bank on any other stat. So strokes gained off the team is a very good starting point uh, for this week. Okay, well, let's talk here about the outright market. Starting off with John Rahm, once again, the massive favorite. He is seven to one to win this week. And you mentioned that it'll probably be a superstar who wins. I'm going to go ahead and say that if you know we want LeBron James and we think that Le that John Rahm is a superstar, just going to go ahead and you know make those bold assumptions. But also with the weather, my like in my like thought process would be that that could make things a bit more volatile. So. What's your read on Rom relative to the market, knowing that things might get a little bit jacked up in terms of wind? Uh, it looks like Friday specifically is bad. Yeah, I mean, you can talk about someone who can gain strokes off the tee. He definitely can. But um, I see him as overvalued only a little bit. Yeah. Um, but enough to the point that I don't want to get there at, at seven, you know, plus 700. Right. Uh, the putter is on fire for him over the past 50 rounds. John Rom leads the field. In strokes gain putting, true, I should say true strokes gain putting according to Data Golf's uh, query tool. Um, Rory plays Bay Hill really well. I think Scotty Scheffler is fully back. So with with that plus the wind, just a good field. It's not like the the largest field, but mm -hmm. really what matters is how many like you know killers are in the field. There's a right. lot of them this week. So seven seven to one's not an, a big enough return for me personally. Um, I wouldn't call like, I'm not going to call him a fade. If you want to play John Rom, if you want to bet John Rom, go ahead. He's incredible. Uh, but I think that there are other ways to go. And, um, with the odds being what they are for the top th three. Yeah. They're all a bit. Okay. So Scheffler shortened from 10 to nine and a half. Same as Rory. Right. Um, those three guys are in a tier of their own in terms of the win odds. I think they're all, Again, I'm not going to touch like fading them or saying they're bad plays, but right. I don't see the value on them this week. So I'm looking more in this the second tier uh, for my card. Yeah, Rom is seven to one, as you mentioned. McElroy and Scheffler both plus nine fifty, shortening from ten to one previously. So we're not looking at those top three. We're not looking at long shots. Who are you zeroing in on as far as outrights for this week? If anybody, it might be no one, which is fair. <laughs> well, it, it's a, it's it's tough this week. I do. I just want to point out that I love that Max Homa is next up uh, at, at twenty to <laughs> one, and then Will Zalatoris. But then we have like Cantlay and, and Xander at twenty three right. and twenty four, respectively. I just love that because yeah. home home is great. Zalatoris has like the doesn't win enough narrative, but yeah, he's next up. But for me, I am looking in uh, even below that uh, with Xander Shoffley. Shocker. Uh, twenty four to one. Tony Finau was 28. He looks like he's now 26. Still sees some value there. And then Cantlay bumped down from 24 to 23. Those are the three guys I think I'm honing in on. Um, if I'm not betting the favorites and I'm not betting long shots, I can back those three and still get a return. Yeah. Um, so long as I'm smart about the rest of, you know, everything else. But, you know, 
Xander's in great form. Finau's in great form. Much more so than Cantlay, but Cantlay coming off of a uh, solo third at the Genesis. I think that means that he's good to go. He's good to be back. All, these guys all have good all-around games. Tony Finau's putter, more than fine uh, by now. So I don't think we have anything to worry about. And we're just getting like good numbers on guys who haven't won enough recently, uh, despite the fact that Tony Finau is starting to win. I uh, love the setup for these guys. They can all gain strokes off the tee with approach, with the putting. I'll have good short games, as, uh, by, by which I mean around the green play there. So those are the three guys that A, my model shows value on, and B, makes sense to me for a week like this at these numbers. Can't lay 23 to one. I think the only concern you could have about him, and I'm not sure if this qualifies as a concern for you, Length. is that he has not played Bay Hill. Um, yeah. Does that matter for you or no? Um, I don't love it, but I don't think that it, it's like the end of the world, frankly. Yeah. Especially because like you look at like, again, guys who can gain via multiple avenues off the tee. Patrick Cantlay does check that box in terms of he can get some distance. He can be accurate when he needs to be. I think that's pretty enticing for Cantlay at 23 to 1. V now 25, 26, Xander 24. If you're picking one of those guys, who's your preferred outright? I think, and this is... You can just say Xander. It's okay. It, it's really close between Tony and, and Xander. Wow. Um, I'm going to go. I'll go Xander. Disrespect to Patrick Cantley. Disrespect. Well, I, I did list them in order. Cantley was third, even though his odds were the shortest. So, uh -huh. no, you just hate him. You hate him. It's okay. Patrick can't play. You heard it here first from Brandon Gadula. Okay. Non outrights. What are you looking for there for the Arlen Palmer? I really want to get like. I don't really see a whole lot with the top tens. Yeah. So I'm bumping down to top twenties. Uh, Brian Harmon plus three ten for a top twenty. He is thirty uh, seventh or better in both strokes gained off the tee and approach over the past fifty rounds, according to Data Golf. Uh, combined, that puts him twenty eighth in total ball striking. Now he's not long off the tee. He's ninety sixth in the field, but he's accurate twenty second, which means that he should get a lot of his approach shots from the fairway, which is not a bad thing yeah. right for this week. So I like that, that, you know, the, the recent success at Bay Hill hasn't been great, but he does have three top twenties in his career at the course. He's in good form now for who Brian Harmon is. So I like him um, at plus three ten for a top 20. Yeah. Uh, three ten for Brian Harmon in the uh, top 20 market over at FanDuel. And like you said, I think that the lack of distance might be why he's so long here. So, you know, you can say he's not long. Okay, I can't take him here, but then you're kind of double counting. I think the, the bookmakers are accounting for that already, and the rest of his game is very good, and he does actually gain strokes off the tee despite not being super long. So he I does, think that that is... You, I think that with him, it, it's a situation where you want to be careful you're not double counting the lack of distance. Yeah, and, you know, we talk about data golf all the time, but you can look and see, okay, what does being short mean? Yeah. Uh, and according to them over the past 50 rounds, he loses about four and a half yards, you know, to the average golfer. Right. With his, That's not, that's different than like being like hitting, driving it as far as I do. Like, yeah, not he, ain't that, he ain't that bad. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. So Brian Harmon T10 or a T20 at plus three ten, whereas Brandon is looking at there, but again, Xander Shoffley, Tony Finau, Patrick Cantley, all considerations in terms of outrights for this week. That's all we got. Brandon, it was good to have you back here on the show for this week. Glad to have you back in one piece uh, from your excursion out to the West. Um, and I'm looking forward to talking to you once again in a couple of minutes, or I guess, I don't know, whenever we're recording for the DFS side of things. Yeah, it was good. Um, I had to knock a little bit of rust off, but nobody should worry because the, the process was there. It was just more like talking through it uh, was right. the rusty part. I thought it was forgetting your headphones was the process part that was. No, I had them plugged. No, I had them plugged into my computer, but you made me start plugging them into my yeah. headphones. Yeah, because you, then microphone. you can hear yourself and you need to hear yourself or else you'll not know if your microphone is unplugged. I unplugged my microphone like last week. I've never screen. once I like, unplugged my microphone. Though. I, I unplug I it like twice a week. I know it you It messes do. up all my recording stuff and it's so annoying. I know, this is, but I, this, I, this I why you're the professional. Yeah. I defaulted to the thing I've done for 10 years and put it into my computer. Done incorrectly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, that's Brandon Gadula. <laughs> Check him out on, on Twitter. <laughs> Great to be back. Welcome. <laughs> He's never going to return ever again. Uh, Akadula13, senior 
managing editor of numberfire.com. You can find his golf sims over at numberfire and uh, some NBA stuff there as well. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J I M S A N N E S. Ed Fang back with us tomorrow. Talk some men's college basketball. That'll be a delight as always. Got more NBA and NHL coming up Thursday, EPL on Friday as well. We'll talk to you all again in the very near future. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. <laughs> 